Welcome back to another episode of the B2B Zero to 10 podcast, a podcast where we're focused on helping bootstrapped entrepreneurs and business owners grow their businesses to 10 million in revenue. I'm your host, Brett Trainer. Today, I welcome Laith Musawe to the podcast. Laith is the CEO and founder of Assistantly. It's a company in the virtual assistant space, but with a twist. Most folks, when they think about VAs, think schedules, calendars, administrative type of tasks, but what Lathe and team are doing is basically finding what I would call virtual specialists. And this could be in the areas of marketing, sales, operations, you can even touch on customer success. And I think this is just such a massive opportunity for entrepreneurs and business owners. It's a very low cost and a very low risk way to scale your business. So if you heard a few episodes ago, I spoke with Ryan Kugler about how he runs three multi-million dollar businesses with the same five people. So I think the old conventional wisdom of how to grow a company and how to assign or delegate tasks is completely changed. And I think, you know, listening to this uh, episode with Lathe may open your eyes to a, a new approach. So again, I, I'm a huge fan of the who, not how approach or methodology. And this is a case study for, for that approach. So anyway, if you are looking to grow your business or your business is stuck or you're at capacity working 18 hours a day, then I would highly encourage you to check out this episode. And as always, I do appreciate you listening. And if you do enjoy the podcast, please do subscribe on iTunes or hit that follow button on Spotify and share it with other business owners who would also get some, some value out of it. So now let's get this interview started. Hey, good morning, Laith. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Brett. Thanks for having me. Super excited. Ah, no, it's my pleasure. I'm, again, I'm super thrilled to have this conversation. I came across you and your services not that long ago. And full disclosure, I'm now already a customer before we even agreed to the podcast. So yeah. <laughs> you can tell I'm, I'm excited. So I think I've, I've teased it a little bit, but a couple topics today. One, I want to talk about your business, how you came up with the idea, starting to grow it. And then two, the service you're offering, which technically virtual assistance, but you know, as we talked offline, I think there's more strategic value to the services that you're providing. So to kick us off, why don't you share with the audience just a little bit about your background and, and then we'll jump into it. Sure. So Assistantly was started a, a little over a year ago. So it's actually, it hasn't been that long, which I think a lot of key catches a lot of people by you know surprise when they work with us is I think they they think we've been intact for like five, 10 years, but it's really been a little over a year Assistantly, kind of that idea for the company came out of the need for another company that I own with a partner. It's a real estate marketing company called Immersive. And we were super slammed at the point where, you know, with, during the pandemic, the virtual tour demand was very, very high. So we're getting calls left and right. And the demand was so high, but our team was only so big. And we were, you know, a lot of things were, you know, falling through the cracks. So like our social media, like we weren't posting on social media. Or we weren't sending invoices on time. We weren't responding to emails on time. Our calendar was a mess um, because there's only so much like there's only so much capacity like a human being really has. Like we, we were doing so much we can do, and we were still working like eighteen to twenty hours a day. So somebody noticed that we were kind of slipping through the cracks, which is not really a good thing. And he's like, "You should really hire a virtual assistant." And I'm like, "What the hell is a virtual assistant?" And he goes, "You know, you need you can, they can help you with your admin, your marketing, your sales, whatever." And I go. All right, well, we need the help. So introduce me to somebody. So he introduces me to a um, really nice girl. She calls me off a 949, which is a Newport Beach area code here in California. And she says, hey, would you, you know, heard you need a virtual assistant. would love to hop on a Zoom and kind of explain how it works. And I said, sure. So we get on a Zoom. And the first question I ask are, are these people real? Are they robots? Is it artificial intelligence? Like, how does it work? And she's kind of giving me the lowdown as like, you know, virtual assistant can help in admin and you know uh you know if they need help with data entry or any of those kind of stuff so i said okay and after five minutes the first thing i noticed about her is she has really good energy and i go wow you know like this girl is awesome she's positive she's smiling she's happy and i asked her you know where are you from you know because the person that referred me to her is in irvine california and i go you live in irvine she goes no i go you live in san diego la she goes no so you don't live in California? She goes, no. I go, Texas, New York, where are you living? She goes, no, I don't live in the United States. 
I go, and it caught me super off guard because I don't think I really <laughs> had a conversation with somebody outside the United States when it comes to work. And I go, where do you live? She goes, I live in the Philippines. I go, you live in the Philippines? Holy crap. I go, okay. I go, what time is it right now? She goes, three in the morning. I go, so it's 3 a.m. and you have this much energy. You're, you're very positive and you're like super, you know, you're super excited to talk to me and try to see what we can get going. And she goes, yeah. So then I asked her, I go, as a virtual assistant yourself, what have you done for clients in the past? And she's, you know, data entry, calendar management, you know, cold calling, lead generation. And she did it for a friend of mine. Like he used to be a client, a friend of mine and his entire team of 15 people, the entire team. And I go, you were the one doing this this entire time. I thought you were local. She goes, no, I've been working with him for like the last year or two. And I go, hey, let me ask you a question. Because it kind of sparked in my head. We had so many clients in my real estate marketing business that were always asking us for like some sort of assistance, whether it was help with like uploading listings or social media or helping them with lead generation, whatever it was. So I started thinking when I was talking to her, I go, are there more people like you? I'm just curious. Are there more people like you? And she goes, oh, yeah. I go, like, how many? Like 100, 200? She goes, oh, like tens of thousands. I go, there's tens of thousands of people like you. And it kind of sparked in my head. I'm like, okay, well, there's people that come to me that need help. And there's people in the Philippines that can help. So I I started talking to her and I go, you know what? I don't really want to hire a virtual assistant. I want to start a virtual assistant company because I think that's better if I can help people instead. And it caught her totally off guard. And she goes, wait, so you don't want a VA? We talked for 45 minutes. You want to start a VA company? And I go, she goes, you don't have any experience with a VA company. I go, I know. I didn't even know what a VA was 45 minutes ago. But I think we can make this work because there's a need for it. And you have people that can do the type of tasks that the clients need. So let's do it. So I hired her as my first director of operations. I just said, you know, I would love to bring you on board. She quit what she was doing, came on board. We really focus in the real estate space. So we're really heavily involved in the real estate industry to start helping agents and brokers across the country with you know, like, you know, uh, operations managers and cold callers and marketing coordinators and social media managers in, in the residential and commercial space. And then we just kind of started growing on a really fast rate. And then other industries started hearing what we were doing. And the, the goal was always to get into bigger, like more generalized industries. But I, I always think it's important to start with the niche industry first, because that's kind of like your, you know, your bread and butter. Like for me, I was really accustomed to real estate because I had a real estate marketing company. And I had a real estate corporate job before that. So I knew people in real estate. So it was a lot easier for me to kind of break in the door that way. Where like I originally wanted to be in like CBD and gaming and law. But I I didn't know anybody. So it's like hard for me just to start marketing into a space I didn't know. But then once we kind of started building credibility in the real estate space and you know people started talking to their friends about it, then we just started breaking into different industries from there. That's fantastic. So now we're kind of in a whole bunch of different industries. Yeah. And I love that story because I think too often, especially if you've been in the the corporate world too long, you tend to think incrementally instead of thinking big. (laughs) And you had no reason to, hey, I'm just going to go start a business and why not, right? Where a lot of people are like, oh, wow, you can't do that. You got to do X, you got to do Y. I'm like, man, when you see an opportunity, right? No time like the, the present. And Something you, you you touched on early into that and why you had the need for it is a lot of founders struggle with what I'll call, you know, owner's capacity, right? There's just only so many hours a day. You're working 18 hours a day. You just can't get everything done. And quite honestly, most, you know, owners or entrepreneurs have really hard time breaking through that, that threshold. And so, you know, one, the, we were able to do that so soon with an existing business. And oh, by the way, you're going to start a second business. Um, fascinating. And, and Kudos to you. That was a really fast growing business and, you know, probably a different set of challenges <laughs> at this stage of the growth than when you were, were first getting up. So now you're in real estate, legal, where are you just into general or what's, uh, where's the areas now? So, so it's more like real estate, you know, professional services, startups, but like in, in, as far as like more specifically, it's like CBD, gaming, law, finance, you know, we help a lot of business coaches a lot of different products and services. Like we have a produce company as a client. We have a CBD, you know, company as a client. We have a gaming company as a client. So it's like, it, it's, it's kind of all over the place. We could kind of start, we could serve any type of client in any type of industry um, because we can fold, you know, different types of roles. So it, it kind of just, it kind of just varies. We don't discriminate when it comes to companies. I, I like to take all sorts of business owners because again, I've been in the shoes when I started the company, when, uh, 
it was just me and you know me and my first you know virtual team member and then now we're at like 15 people and they kind of just run the it's like more of like an as more of like a well-oiled machine now where everybody kind of has their part they do what they're supposed to do and I kind of could just get to oversee things and make sure things are staying afloat normally. Yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic. And like I said, I, I think there's a huge future for this and, you know, I'm a big believer and, and we may have talked about this offline or not. I can't remember, but the, the book, who, not how, and, you know, you're filling a big gap within that, that process. And, you know, I think, you know, one for my business, you know, highly encourage folks to look at this, right? You don't always need a full-time team member, and when you do it yeah. right and you've got contractors, but those tend to be freelance. And what I found when starting to look at people to complement my business or you know, clients businesses is it's hard to find right those, those resources unless you're looking for IT or dev ops, right? Those types of things. There's some companies that do a really good job. But if you're looking for what and again, I think, you know, virtual assistant is a um, under appreciation of, of the skill set that mm-hmm. your folks have because you know like I said I brought on somebody that's that's going to do all of my marketing right so in my world it, six months ago I would have when I heard virtual assistant I would have thought the same thing right calendars invites those types of things but you know the fact is you've got some really skilled people that you know can do the jobs that many business owners and small businesses really really need. Yeah, and let's touch on like the the virtual assistant, like so, like the term virtual assistant. So, and, and we talked about this offline, which I, I definitely want to bring up is when I think of like virtual assistant, I think of somebody that can handle more like entry level tasks, just like you know, like data entry or calendar management. Somebody to assist you with your tedious and your daily needs, which is people definitely hire a lot of VAs. That's very common. But I would say VAs are typ- virtual assistants are typically for like more like the tedious tasks like invoicing or like data entry or email calendar management, things that like I'm able to do, I just don't have the time to do it. And it takes, you know, just takes too much time out of my day. A virtual team member is a little bit different. A virtual team member is like something that's an extension of your team and they can bring a skill set that you don't are, that you don't already know. So like for you, you hire somebody in marketing, you know, like, you know, you need it, but you don't really one know how to do it or want to do it. So like then now you have somebody that can actually bring a tremendous amount of value because you have somebody in marketing that has a great skill set that has past experience that can bring their past experience and past knowledge into your company and actually like do something with it. Brett, here are a couple of suggestions on how we can make your podcast better, your marketing better, et cetera. So that's where the value is. And same thing with like sales, you know, like I'm good at sales, but not every founder is good at sales. Maybe they're right. better on back end stuff. And it's cool, like you bring somebody that somebody in that like that loves to cold call and set up appointments and help with your CRM and like you know how to properly organize your CRM and how to do lead generation like different ways. And I, I've hired lead generate. I have I have a LinkedIn lead generation specialist. Like that's her entire job is just to reach out to people on LinkedIn. I don't feel really comfortable doing that. That's like really not my thing. I don't like that approach, but I know she loves it. She's used to it, so I might as well have her do something that she loves. Same thing with admin operations. Like you can bring somebody on board that knows systems and processes that could implement them in your, as part of your business. So like a virtual team member and virtual assistant, like they sound the same, but they're just a little different. And it's kind of why I say we offer virtual team members, not so much like VAs. I think it's a little degrading, just a little bit, just to be like, Hey, that's my assistant. I feel like that kind of takes some of that worth out. Where if I say virtual team member, it's like, Oh, like this. They not only like, do you feel like, Hey, I have an extension of my team, but they also feel like, Hey, I'm part of Brett's team. Like, you know, we're building this thing together. It's like a, it's like a partnership. Yeah. No, I, I think that's so true. Cause I even, I was thinking of, you know, virtual spe- specialist, right? Because again, it, as you look yeah. at it specifically in the, the business owners that get bogged down, right? There's need between sales, marketing, even customer success, I mean, potentially even in some delivery, depending on what your, your product is. Now have a good idea of where you're the bottleneck. <laughs> and I think you, you hit on another really good point, which is what either you don't, I think it goes hand in hand. If you're not good at it or you don't like it, it usually just doesn't get done. And that's mm-hmm. can be holding back your business in a lot of cases. So thinking about where you have the gaps and where you can improve and then start to plug in, right? There's nothing wrong with hiring full-time people if you have a full-time need for it. But I think too, too often these small business owners leap to hire somebody full time and it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So 
Yeah, which which is why we offer the part time option because you know not every type of tasks or you know role needs somebody full time. And like you know, there's a lot of companies that offer full time only. And actually, I offered full time only for a very long time because I'm like, you know, they should you know people should need to hire you know if they if they just hired a VA full time or a virtual team member full time, like they'll really see the need of it. But then I got a lot of pushback. Like I really don't need somebody forty hours a week. Like I'm totally cool with twenty hours a week. And then. I even realized that myself. I'm like, you know, I don't have my salesperson working eight hours a day. Like, I feel like that's kind of exhausting for her to do. Like, four hours a day is totally cool right. for her to, you know, be cranking out leads. So, yep, if the need at first is part time and then maybe you start scaling, then you can always upgrade your part time to a full time, anyways. So, like, sometimes that happens. Like, you know, I had a part time recruiter. Now I have four full time recruiters, five full time recruiters. Like, once the need kind of you start scaling, then you're like, okay, upgrade part time to full time. Now we need another full time. Now we're getting even busier. We need another full time. So it's like you can start slow and then kind of exponentially grow from there. Yeah. I mean, it's a low risk way to grow your business, right? I mean, we've seen too many business owners make that wrong hire and it's an 18 month error. And sometimes it's, it's fatal to the business because you don't have a, a ton of extra cash flow going through. And if you, you tie it up into wrong hire and then have to start over. You know, it, and then too often, right? It's either you, you're too afraid to pull the trigger, and like I said, I, I love this as a, a low risk way to really improve the the talent on your team. Yeah, I mean, if, if for less than a thousand dollars a month, you can you know you essentially have a part time virtual team member for you know that can whatever skill set it is, marketing, sales, admin, operations, which is like you said, low risk, and it's like you can't you can't really find that out there. It really is. I mean, and for me, like the way my head works is, I'm like, if I can save. You know, my time is worth a lot, just like your time is worth a lot, especially as a business owner, like your time's worth a lot. You know, if I break down my hourly rate, it's, it's worth a decent amount. So if I'm able to save 10 hours extra a week, just 10, you know, that's 40 hours a month. Like I'm, I'm cool paying a th- 997. If somebody can save me 10 hours a week on doing something that I either I'm doing that I don't want to do or something that I don't want to learn how to do. And like, I can't like spend the time on my business doing it. Like, 10 hours a week for me, like that's 40 hours a month that I can focus my time on, you know, a new offering or like conversating with clients or networking or bring on another affiliate. Like that to me is like, that's valuable because I'm thinking of like a ways that I could work on the business, not so much work in the business. Right. So like, it's, it's kind of the mentality people have with it. Like people are like a thousand dollars, man, that's expensive. But it's like, not actually, honestly, it's really not when it's like 987 a month and you have somebody that's like kind of your right hand on a part-time level helping your business like fill, fill the holes, you know, in the yeah. business. Like it's, you know, any time that you can save is very valuable because any business owner's you know time is extremely, extremely valuable in the group. Yeah, no, a hundred percent right. And again, adding a skill set that <laughs> you don't have, and as you say, they can do it probably better and they enjoy doing it. So, you know, it's definitely a, a win-win. You know, it's interesting. I had Ryan Kugler on the podcast. I think his episode was was last week, and he's mm-hmm. also running. He's running three businesses with the the same five folks, right? And I know you've got the the real estate business that you're still running. Now you're growing this growth company. I I love this this idea, right? I mean, I think back to my original comment that people don't think big enough and. You know, just assume you can't do it. You know, I think it's it's interesting. So, how are if you don't mind me asking, how are you splitting the time between the new company and the old company, and you know, how do you view that? Yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, like the other company we have, I mean, because it's it's more local based in Orange County and LA and a little bit of San Diego. It, it's pretty easy to manage with our team and you know our back end support. They do a really great job. Kind of, it's it's kind of like a the workflow is already done. So it's just more like we kind of have conversations with clients, like everything else is like done by our team, like all the steps and our, all our SOPs are established. But what I've noticed is like, now that I know how to properly utilize virtual team members and like kind of where to plug them in, it like makes me want to start another business, you know, like in a way, just because it's like, you kind of crack the code, like, you know, I have affordable offshore talent that helps me with every category of business and every category of business that I classify is going to be, you know, admin and operations like whenever you hire somebody in admin operations, that's typically to help, you know, save time in your day or save time for your business. They're time savers. You know, like that was my first hire. Like I was working 18, 20 hours a day. Then that got cut down to 10 hours a day, which is like cut in half. Then you hire somebody in marketing and marketing is typically to help stay top of mind with your clients and prospects. So whether that's like email marketing or, you know, podcasts or whatever it is, that's to stay top of mind. So like that's whenever you hire like a marketing coordinator or like you know a director of marketing from us like that's typically why you hire them. 
um, sales. Like if you, you know, if you want to convert prospects into money or prospects into clients, then you hire somebody in sales and like that's like lead pre qualification, cold calling, follow up, etc. And then the last one is social media. Like if you want to help grow your brand, obviously social media is big. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok Reels. You can hire somebody in social media, which is really, really great. Another kind of that's four aspects of business, if you really think about it. Admin operations, marketing, sales, social media. There's really not too much else to it. So like now that I, I know that I could plug in a virtual team member in each category, it's like it makes me want to start something like new because it's like, oh, I can plug in this person here, plug in this person here. And like it's it's really easy to scale when you have virtual team members. Yeah. Um, like you just work on the business. You're not working in the business doing the tedious stuff anymore, which I, w- I wish I would have knew this three years ago. It has saved me like sleepless nights, but it's good that I know it now, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you're still young. So, and if I had this, this yeah. capability <laughs> number of years ago, and I think the world was kind of set up a little bit differently, it would have been harder to do this For sure. with technology and people now used to, to remote. And, you know, the one area that I'll add to that, that I think you're going to see a spike in, or at least people asking about is customer success, right? Because I think, yeah, you know, I, per people add folks, you know, as a full-time hire, which I advocate a lot of the time, man, take care of the customers that you have and make sure they're leveraging it. But, you know, I can, I can see an opportunity for that. that. I would love to, uh, to touch on that point because I was asking my partner, we were scaling really big, really fast. And I was asking my partner, I go, do we hire more recruiters? Like, do we hire more director of like, operations managers? Like, what do we do? And he goes, you hire a client success manager. And I'm like, really? I'm like, you want, why would I hire a client success? He goes, when was the last time you checked in with your clients? And I re- had zero answer to that. I go, yeah. I can't, re- I really can't remember. And, and, and it's funny because like the best type of client is a returning client, right? So like the best type of client for me is somebody that hires a second and third VA. Why well, wasn't nurturing my clients properly? And I never, cause I didn't have the time to. So I brought a client success manager. The first thing I had him do was, you know, send, you know, a message and call my clients and say, Hey, I'm, you know, um, late the CEO of Sicily wanted me to call to see how you're doing, how's experience so far, how's Edward, how's Kate, you know, so he started, he just started ripping through my list, my client list, and my clients were like getting really great responses. They're like, oh, thank you, thank you so much for checking in on me. And like, it also, instead of my clients coming to me with like any problem issues, something great, they, they now go to Melvin, which is really, for me, is really helpful because like that also saves time out of my days. Like th- all my clients now have a point of contact. That's not me. Like my right. emails were getting flooded from my clients with like, if there was a problem or if there was an issue or if there was something about billing or if they wanted to hire another VA, it's like, it was always late. And like, when you have so many clients, that gets problematic because, you know, then you're dealing with everything and it's not very fun. But like when I brought Melvin on board and obviously, Brett, you met Melvin, like it's great because he's like part of the entire client journey from like, you know, when you meet with your potential VA uh, virtual team member candidates to like after day one, after week one, he's checking in to see how you're doing. He's going to ensure your client success, help you with plan onboarding. And like, that was like a, the bit, that was the best hire. Like if anybody who's like in any business, like the best hire I like, I could proudly say is a client success manager. And I actually wrote the entire playbook for it too. Like I have the playbook. I wrote the entire thing of like how to properly bring a client success manager in, you know, how to, you know, properly rate your clients. Like I have like the kind of that stoplight method. Like, you know, if a client's in the red stage, that means they need immediate attention and that means they're not enjoying their experience. And like, what's, you know, that comes to my attention. So like, I'll just quickly go over it really briefly, just so people have an idea of what a client success manager is. Yeah, good it, idea. The, the, t- the title is pretty explanatory. It's ensure your clients are, you know, set up for success and do well. And you have somebody checking in with them constantly. But for example, you know, when he checks in with clients, if someone, you know, might tell Melvin, this VA is just really not working out. Like I'm not really happy. Like then that's classified as a red. Like, so that's stop. Like, you know, Leif needs to know about it. Leif, Hey, this client is experienced these types of problems. Let's come up with a solution to make them happy and see what we can do to be find a replacement, whatever the problem is. That's a red. A yellow is, you know, um, I only hear about the reds and those are like kind of emergency situations, which is fine. I like to be looped into those to make sure the clients get to go. A yellow is somebody that's like, you know, my VA is doing good, but there's a couple of things that are kind of bugging me about it. And I don't, I'm not involved at all. That's like between Melvin and my director of ops to figure out a solution to make the you know client happy, whether it's checking with the VA to see like kind of what's going on to see if we can fix it. Maybe it's just miscommunication. So that's yellow. Green is somebody that's like, Brett's, you know, we check in with Brett. Brett's like, oh, dude, everything has gone great with Edward. He's doing a great job. Super happy. Cool. He's a green. We like greens. Um, we want, we want our clients to be green. 
So that's a stoplight, you know, red, yellow, green. But then there's what you call blue. And blue is, and you can make it any color. It's typically purple. I don't like purple, so I, I say blue. And blue is something that's like, you know, we go to Brett and Brett's like, dude, this is the best thing I've ever done. I can't wait to hire my second virtual team member. Um, you know, I'm super excited for what's in store. Like I, I should have done this sooner. So like, he's like something that just is absolutely in love with everything that he's like, you know, with his VA in the process. And that's when we ask Brett, you know, Brett, thank you so much. Like, would you mind leaving a video testimonial and maybe, you know, any referrals? I want to be like, you know, greatly appreciated. So then we have our clients identified in red, yellow, green, and blue. And like, whenever you look in our CRM, it's kind of tagged that way. So like, I, we know every day and Melvin gives me the report, you know, how many reds do we have? You know, how many yellows, how many greens and how many blues? And it's typically 98, 99% are greens or blues, but we'll, we'll sometimes have a yellow or red. Yeah. And it's good because like, it's all hands on deck. And I built the entire playbook with like the templates of like what to send and all that stuff. And actually like, he does such a good job where I mean, he, you know, after the first two weeks, like he's at a point where he doesn't need templates. He kind of just understands this, you know, these situations have happened. Here's how I can handle it, which is great. And our clients like love Melvin. I mean, our clients really, really love having him as part of, you know, their team, because again, a client success manager gets appointed to their team. So our clients also feel like, cool, like, you know, it's a little awkward maybe talking with my VA about a couple of things. Let me talk to Melvin. Melvin, you know, maybe might be able to help resolve these issues. So like they go to Melvin for everything, which also, again, eliminates me from the entire process. Right. Like, I'm more of the front end stuff. We had a conversation. I'm like, you, you went through the process. Like you got on the meeting with Melvin, you hired, everything's been great. Melvin checks in with you, but like, I'm fully removed. Like, and then we'll, we'll, I'll chat with you because we're friends, but you know, yeah. um, otherwise you're not really going to need to hear from me because Melvin's, Melvin's there. Yeah, and if it is you, then you're the bottleneck and growth isn't going to happen as fast because you have to be involved with it. Yeah, and I think the under, super underappreciated power of the, a good customer success or client success, and you touched on it too, is it's the great front end of business development. <laughs> Who better to sell your services than a customer than, you know, they don't want to hear an ad from you or you, right? They'd rather hear from like somebody yeah. who's using it. So great Absolutely. job capturing it. Yeah, because I'd rather have, you know, a happy returning client because they, they, you, the trust is built. They have had a good experience. Like, you know, I brought Melvin on when we had 40 clients. Well, those 40 clients, I had one VA. Some of them are on their 12th VA now, right? So, like, for me, those clients are not going to be a pain in my ass because they're you know, existing clients. They've already gone through the process. They understand it. It's easy for them. Where, you know, now we're running Facebook ads and it's like we got a lot of those colder clients. And, you know, sometimes when you get clients or prospects from ads, they're a little hit or miss. And like, for me, like, I'd rather get a Brett hiring a second VA than a like, because he, he loves it. He's a, he's a fan and he's going to refer people because he had such a great experience. I'm like a super cold person. Like I'd rather yeah. have a returning client, which it was an easy way to like increase our business by 25% just by implementing Melvin right away. Such an underappreciated talent. And then the one last thing I do want to kind of touch on yeah. um, is Back to that point, because, you know, the stats I use all the time for this podcast and with clients is, right, only 10% of all businesses actually get to a million and only 1%, right, 99 out of 100 don't get to 10 million. And I think the biggest blocker is is growth and the, the owner being the bottleneck. And so, I mean, I think you're a great proof of not only with the business you were solving for, right, you had the need now providing these services that if done correctly and, you know, with a good plan in mind, there's no reason why these businesses can't, can't break through and just take, right. Take, like I said, take the risk, low risk, right. Cause you're not hiring anybody. You can, if it works out, but until your business needs it, you don't necessarily need full time ac across that spectrum. Yeah. I mean, cause it's kind of tough to hire. I, I, and this is not to discredit people here in the United States. Cause I, I have people here in the United States that work for our company but it's, it's a little easier to hire somebody at like a little under a thousand dollars, like on a part time rate to start it off. The commitment, it's not like, it's not commitment, it's not extreme. It's, it's very affordable and you can start scaling as slow or fast as you want. Like we had one client that started off the part time VA. A month later, they had five full time VAs because they're like, Oh, like we have so many gaps in our business. We didn't realize it. And we didn't realize that a virtual team member can do this type, you know, this type of work for us. Like if this person can do this, can, do you have somebody that can do this? And I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. So it's like, you can scale as fast or as slow as you want. And again, it's, it's really new for a lot of people. I mean, sure. I'd say 
97% of our clients have never hired a virtual team member. So, um, but it's just hiring that first one to really see the value. And then you're like, okay, now that I have this person for marketing, man, my sales are lacking. Like I never follow up with all the leads that come in the door, which is something that happened with us. Like we had so many leads that came in the door, man, our follow-up system, our nurture was so bad. And we developed, we developed that and I brought on a, you know, VA to kind of monitor the whole nurture program and leads that fall that come in. So it, it, they can be plugged in in any aspect of your business. And like when we start scaling and there's going to be, obviously when you scale, there's growing pains. Right. It's like you can really sit down as a business owner and be like, it's just really like, I just have like this little handy dandy whiteboard right here of like what's priority and kind of what we need help with. And it's like, well, I could just plug a VA to do this. Even if it's like one or two tasks like that I don't like to do or don't want to do or that I'm doing, like I'd rather have those like, the more I can delegate off my plate, the more I could do for the company. Yeah. So it's the way I like to say, um, you know, there's, there's another way to look at it is like, you can do the task like for people like on a really basic level. Um, if you want to hire a virtual team member, it's like, if you're doing a task, you, you do it and you're, you're doing it and it's taking a lot of your time, then you start delegating it and then it starts being automated. So it's like, do it, delegate it, automate it. So like all the invoicing and all the backend stuff in my company is like totally automated. Yeah. Like nurture campaign. Totally automated. I don't even, I think people think I am the one that is reaching out. No, I haven't reached out to people in a very long time. It's compl- like our systems are completely automated. But another misconception is like just because things are automated doesn't mean that there's not somebody behind the automation. Like there's always got to be somebody like clicking a button or like monitoring the automation to make sure everything's going, you know. So like I wouldn't just have any automations in place just to have automations in place. I, you have to have like an operations person at least monitor it. Yeah, um, just to make sure things don't break. So, yeah, no, kind of shared philosophy because mine is like you know eliminate, automate, delegate, right? So exactly. And, and to your point that it's not just because you can automate it doesn't mean that you don't want to. There's going to be times when you need to have the touch, right? The human touch, the added value. But a lot of the time, the For customers sure. don't care if they, if they just want information or get stuff done. Billing is, I'm sure, is one, <laughs> right? They just want it to be accurate. And if they have a question, they want it resolved and not necessarily, I don't have to talk to three people, right? In order to, or they don't want to, it just causes unnecessary friction within their business. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's something where, it's just like you just really hire somebody just to start delegating slowly. And then it just, once you start delegating from there, you could just easily up the tasks. And I typically like give one to two tasks on the first week to my virtual team members. And then I do another one to two the next week, one to two. And then by the time you know it, six months later, they know how to do like 12 or 15 different things. That's awesome. Um, so it's, it's easier just to kind of like baby step it instead of like, here are 15 things to do. Like they're not going to feel overwhelmed and it's not going to get done. That makes sense. And maybe I, I told you there's one last question. I've got one, one last question. Because yeah, you guys yeah. will also do, um, you don't have to fit necessarily into a bucket, right? You'll do some recruiting for specific or unique positions as well. Yeah. I mean, like, again, we I, I like to say we hire an admin operations, marketing, sales, social media, but then there's also going to be some very obscure positions or maybe some specialized positions that somebody might need help with. They want their VA to know, a virtual team member to know a, a, a certain skill set. They want them to know a specific tool or platform. Like that's very common. Like, you know, hey, do you, does this person know HubSpot or does this person know, you know, contextually or whatever it is. Um, I need somebody that knows these types of tools and platforms because it make it easier for the client instead of training from scratch that they, these people come in with a you know, foundation um, ready to work and implement systems and processes. So we get it a lot where maybe sometimes... You know, they need like a VA that or a team member that need that learns like Spanish or that knows Spanish or that knows Mandarin or like something a little obscure, like a different language. Like either I like to classify them as unicorns. Um, it's going to be somebody that's like either like a different language, a, a specialized skill set or like a specialized tool and platform. We thrive on hiring like virtual team members that can do that kind of stuff. You know, can we find a virtual team member for absolutely anything? I don't like to say we could find them for absolutely anything. I always say for like the specialized rules, we'll try our best. But the good thing is like you can, you go through our process completely free anyway. So like you actually get to meet these candidates and check out their, this, you know, PDF resumes and video resumes and interview them and ask them any questions before you hire anyways. So like we, we, we at least want to try to see if we could find a great fit for you. And you get to measure that by the interviews and, you know, the, the candidates we send over. And, you know, if they are fantastic and if they're not, we'll try again. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, it's it's a lot affordable, obviously, and, and, and it kind of takes that busy work out of your day of like posting an ad and trying to recruit yourself and like 
I've done it. Like I used to do it. It's, it's a pain in the, you know, it's a pain in the butt to like yeah. post an ad, go through candidates, filter them out, interview. It's like, we do that all that for you. Where we're just like, Brett, here are the three candidates, check them over. You like them. When are you available for a meet and greet tomorrow? Great. You meet them. And it's like processes are like very quick. Yeah. Yeah. And off and running, right. It was, <laughs> if you need somebody and 24 running. hours, 48 hours, you know, done, right. You'll, you'll have that process complete. So again, I know I kind of sound like an infomercial, but again, I think just, you know, that somebody hadn't thought about this before, right. It just, it, it just makes way too much sense. So um, I appreciate it and definitely will want to uh, check in with you in the not too distant future as you continue to, to grow this yeah. company. And uh if people want to reach out and, and touch base with you and learn more, what's the, what's the best place for them to find you? Yeah. So um, obviously you can go to our website at www.assistantly.com. If you want to connect with me directly, you can send me an email, you know, just to my personal email. It's L A I T H. That's my first name, Leif, L A I T H at assistantly.com. And that's A S S I S T A N T L Y.com. It's assistant the ly.com um, they can reach out to me directly via email i'd be happy to help or unicorn at assistantly.com also goes to my email so um email is typically the best method of communication and then i can always like if they ever if anybody ever wanted to get like on a meeting one-on-one -on -one, i could just send you my calendar link um, and we can book a you know a date and time on the calendar so i could shoot that over to you via email Awesome. Yeah. And we'll add all that to the show notes and make it super easy for people to, to track you down. So appreciate you taking some time. Uh, like I said, it's, I think it's really interesting. Absolutely. I think there's some great ideas for folks to say, Hey, incrementally improve your business or go big and, you know, look at other opportunities. So keep us posted too. If you do start a, a third business out of this, I'd be yeah, curious to I, see where I, you take it. <laughs> absolutely. And I appreciate everything, Brett. And um, it's, it's cool because, you know, we get to go and hop the podcast and then you're also applying in a, and, and a friend. So I know we'll touch base and yeah, if anybody needs anything, I'm, I'm just here to help. So awesome. Appreciate it. Have a, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Brett. All right. Take care. Appreciate Cheers. It.